<laughs> Malfunction there. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to my live. I had that extra screen pop up there. I'm not sure where that came from. Looks like from our last, one of our last episodes. I don't know how that happened, but welcome welcome to my live welcome to my youtube channel if you are new here my name is diane gutierrez and i am a creative memories advisor located in southern california yes this is home of taylor swift this week <laughs> if you're into that then you'd be excited i personally am not that excited but i do have a couple ladies here in my house that are very excited about that so we gotta have to roll with it, right? <laughs> but anyway, welcome. Hi, Sharon, thanks for joining. So today we are going to talk about adding texture to our scrapbook layouts. But before we get into that, let's just chat a little bit about um, uh, what's going on at Creative Memories. Hi, Ruth. Okay, and I unmuted myself there we go so um, new product came out this week just started on Monday it's this brand new birthday collection it's called birthday bonanza and I don't know about you but I am just loving these colors I think they're so bright and happy and I'm very happy that we are getting a we have a new birthday line out the other one had been around for a while I liked it it was nice but I really like this one I hope that you do too and the buy it all uh, bundle is on sale so if you like all the pieces and it has several different pieces to it pattern paper fast to fab um, inspired papers the matte card stickers L, um, embellishments and of course those two fabulous uh, tools that i'm going to show you a little bit closer up here um, it is on sale for 10 percent off until august 11th at noon central time so good deals good deals um, so what are you guys thinking about those colors? And this is the border punch that comes in the buy it all bundle or could be purchased separately. Super cute, stars and balloons. I'm looking forward to seeing this one up close and personal. <laughs> it's, it looks really cute. And then of course there's a border making cartridge right here. And the uh, fallout from this can be attached to the balloons on the other one and the little stars could be used too so super cute fallout on this punch i mean on this border making cartridge so that should be really fun as well hi jody <laughs> and then the there's a borders buffet going on if <laughs> if you love the silicone mat that came out a while back i love mine and um, I said this yesterday that from the day one when I got my first um, silicone mat, the 13 by 13, I've always folded it in half. So I think this was genius for them to come out with a half size. So perfect for doing borders. That's why it's in the border buffet. So of course, there's only one way to get this and that is to um, participate in the border buffet by purchasing the qualifying amounts of different types of borders whether they're laser cut borders or uh, sticker sheets. So fun stuff all the way around, but that mat looks super fun and uh, more size appropriate, I think. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining everybody, I appreciate it. Okay, and that's what we have going on. Let me come on back to you. So if you um, need an advisor, I'd love to be your advisor and that's my, um, email to the website to my creative memories website and um but it's always listed in all my videos as well as my personal email so if you need anything check the description of my videos everything is usually listed down below okay so i am ready to talk about texture <laughs> how about you guys um so what we're going to talk about today is like why we'll start off i guess by saying why is it we want to add texture to our layouts um, and do we have to so i'm going to answer that second one first and no we don't have to add texture it's just um, an element that i hope to show you as we go through today that um, just you know adding texture or dimension to our layouts really helps to um, it's an art element that helps to bring back feelings and memories so if we're looking at it uh, scrapbook layout of an event 
of a time gone by, then it hopefully adding in some of these textures to our layout would help us to remember that event or have those same feelings brought back up while we're looking at the album. And that's why we want to add dimension, dimension and texture. Uh, but we certainly don't have to. There are no rules, <laughs> right? So it's, it's our scrapbook. We add what we want to add. But it's one way of engaging in uh, somebody's sense of touch without them really t um, having to touch it. When they see things like wood pieces or cork or um, twine or something, we already know what that feels like. So it kind of invokes those feelings for us um, just by looking at them. Um, I am by no means a mixed media girl, never have been. I have tried it and it's just not for me. I really admire those that can do that and have the patience for it. I feel like I'm a little bit of a faster, like I want to I want to be a faster scrapbooker. I feel like I'm already a slow scrapbooker. So um, having to wait for things to dry and stuff just wasn't what I wanted to do. So, um, but, there, but so we're not gonna talk about mixed media today. We're going to talk about um, subtle ways, easy, subtle ways to add texture to our layouts to kind of uh, help them pop and help them come alive. Uh, but I mean, I do like to ink my edges sometimes. I do like mist and sprays. I've used that occasionally and uh, things like stamping. I've done some stamping on my scrapbooks, but not my go-to, okay? So these are not my ideas. I did not come up with these. These are just things that I have learned over the years. And I thought, you know, I wanna share with you because I did a video recently where I was doing some paper tearing and that's one thing we're gonna talk about today. And that seems to um, have sparked a lot of conversation. So I thought, you know, why not? Let's talk about um, other textures too that we can add. Okay, let me flip you around to my desktop, change my lighting a little bit here so you could see. Okay, there we go. Okay, so for today, I'm going to mostly be using um, I will be using just one photo, um, my cute daughter when she was like two. And um, just to, I wanna kinda have this in place. Let me scoot it so it's in the center. Um, I want to have you know one photo and one idea and then change the, check, the texture out as we go through so that you can see um, how it changes the layout overall. Hi, Helen. So first off, I wanna start with talking about the background. Now this is not one of my nine, but I thought it's, it's worth mentioning because um, the background alone could make a huge difference in that feeling and that um, emotions that we talked about, getting those, you know, us back to that moment in time where this took place. So here it is on white paper, just by matting it is um, adding more dimension and texture already, but it looks nice. Adding some simple embellishments help it to look really nice as well. So, but let's see what happens when we change out the background. I mean, you guys all know this, we're just, I kind of want this video to be more like a reference video. So we can go back and look at it when we are ready to, um, you know, we were looking for ideas or some inspiration to help us um, get started. So here is um, it on blue. Just a little, a piece of uh, light baby blue paper changed it dramatically. Now I feel like, okay, it's, she's younger, it's more juvenile and so on. Okay. But then when we change it up for a piece of pattern paper, it makes even more of a statement. This pattern paper, if you can see, it's just a bunch of, let me um, grab this, give it a little stability as I lift it up. You see, it's just a bunch of little dots. So again, age appropriate for my photo, but just adding that um, helped kick up the texture on um, the layout. And that's just simple things that we can do right away without even, we do this without even thinking about it, right? Okay, 
So number one, let's get into this. We're gonna keep this here. And like I said, just keep using the same uh, photo and embellishments for the most part. Okay, number one, something we all have and we all use is our decorative blades on our trimmer, right? We, we have these and just by use, utilizing these and adding that treatment to the paper really um, helps to, um, that counts as adding texture. So I'm sure a lot of us do this already. And if we don't have the, the fancy blades, then we have the scissors. We've used the scissors for a long time. And let me see, let's change this up. I'm gonna switch over actually come back here. Now, looking at the different types of blades that we have um, could also help to, you know, think about how we could bring back to this time and place. So she's young here. So something like Victorian, would it, I kind of think, no, I don't, that's not gonna, you know, um, be juvenile enough for this. Um, scoring, well, <laughs> that has a different purpose altogether. But something like scallop, that would be fun. Uh, stamping, that would be a good one. Uh, deco, I love that one for so many things. Um, that would be fun for this. And even wave, wave is nice, but when I think of wave, it's kind of more of ocean and um, things like that. You want things to be moving in a free form. So it's just looking at the names and the style of these blades um, start bringing us back into that time and place and help the emotions and um, that feeling of that event. So I'm gonna choose the scallop. I feel like this one is sweet and innocent, like my photo. I'm gonna take my mat out so we could save that for later and bring in another piece. Okay, actually let's keep this here for one second. So when we change it out, we can see the difference. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut off a little piece. And then slide that right in its place. And you see how the scallop now just added to the, um, the sweetness of the photo. It's a very, I think it's very um, juvenile, which is what I would be going for in this photo. Okay, so just doing that to the bottom is nice. We could also add a little piece to the top. Again, these are this tool is something we are all probably used to and probably the one way that we all add texture to our layouts and we don't even realize it. Okay, super cute. I love that one. <laughs> okay, so that's using um, our decorative blade. And that was easy, right? So I put everything away so I don't, I think I'm, get the trimmer out of the way so I can scoot this front and center. And to go along with um, our tools that we already have, like the blades or the scissors, we also could do the same procedure with um, our decorative punches. So I'm going to bring in a border punch and actually I'm gonna trim this one off. So we'll start fresh. Oops. Okay. There's a couple of different ways that we can use our decorative punches to bring in texture. This punch has a lot of texture in it. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. Oops. Okay, so do you see what I mean by having a lot of texture in it? I mean, it has this, whoops, let me get in a spot where you can see it. Let's put her picture back here. You see it has all the open area, those crisp, sharp lines and um, it cuts so nicely and there's so much detail that that just adds a whole different look to it. And that's changing the, like how we feel about it. 
I feel like this is even more sweet <laughs> looking than the scalloped and would be so appropriate for this photo because she's all dressed up and she's, you know, looking super elegant <laughs> for a two-year-old. Um, yes, Helen, that would be a great idea to store, storing and organizing our embellishments. Yes. <laughs> That's always the quest, right? Yes. Um, and I didn't switch my, my screen over. Um, we're talking about border punches and border making cartridges. So yes, we'll have to do that one time is talk about how we store our different pieces and how we can get to them quickly. And, and even our tools, right? Our tools, we want to know what we have in place so that you know, how did I find this and how did I come up with this one for this photo or this layout? So yeah, that's a, actually a, a good idea. Thank you. Um, so we want to keep in mind, so number two <laughs> is we want to keep in mind um, all of our border punches, our border making cartridges as well, because that can add texture and bring us back to that time and place as well. Okay, but another way to do that is, let me switch this one out, put our regular mat back in for a moment, because it doesn't have to just be on the mat, the photo mat. Just bringing in a strip of the same border, let's put it down here, let's turn it upside down. And this is what we do all the time, right? And so we are already building that texture into our layout when we do something as simple as this, just making a 12 inch punch out and putting it right down at the bottom or the top or both, right? I love the top. The top kind of makes it feel like a little curtain, like she's at a show or something. So, and of course it could go on the sides as well, double it up. It can also become a little shelf for our photo. I love doing that, especially when I only have one photo. I don't want it to be floating off into this into space, so I, I give it a shelf a lot of times to kind of hold it in place. So that looks super cute on this with this photo. So just one punch gave me lots of options for adding different texture to my layout. Okay, let me clean this up. And we are moving right along. Let's go to number three, which is my all-time favorite right now anyway, <laughs> which is paper tearing. I love, I have just been loving paper tearing lately. I don't know why it's been around forever. It's just one of those things that I guess it comes back around every once in a while, right? <laughs> um, okay, let me get my supplies out for that. So I am using scrap of paper today. I'm not really intending that any of these make a whole lot of sense. So um, I just thought I'm gonna show you using up some scrap paper would be a little easier. Okay, so here's my photo and my layout and I wanna bring in a shelf. We just talked about that. So here I have a piece of paper. Oh, it's, it's probably about a four by 10 and but I want to add a little bit of treatment, so I'm going to paper tear it. And with um, Creative Memories paper and a lot of other paper, when you start tearing it towards you, you'll see the white part come showing through. So if you want that look, then you keep tearing it toward you. If you don't want the white, then you tear it away from you, okay? And I just love giving this a rough cut, kind of letting it do its thing. I'm mostly watching over here, like trying to keep it as even as I can and take off whatever I have, an inch, a half an inch. Right now it's more like a half an inch. And that dramatically changes the look of the paper. So now it's not a straight cut, giving my shelf a little bit extra pizzazz down there. Okay, another fun thing to do is to layer that up. So I have more paper. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Let's see, are these even? No, oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna start tearing away from me because I don't want the white core to show. 
Oh, I got a little piece there. There we go. And let me trim this off. I guess I wasn't done with my trimmer. I'm gonna do about, let's see here, um, two inches or so. Let's see if we like that. And I would just layer it right on top of here. So I'm going to trim my green paper as well. Let's see. Let's see how much do I want to take off. Maybe an inch. Yep. And we can keep going. You can keep adding layers before we adhere that down. <laughs> so now I'm just going to bring in a piece of um, light blue, baby blue, and do the same thing. Who's with me? Who likes paper tearing? Oh, and at the end, yeah, let me know at the end which one is your favorite. Which ones do you use already? And which ones might be new? Let's go ahead and trim this off. Oh, a little bit more. Oh, my trimmer, I think my blade needs to be replaced. I just flipped my mat thinking that was the issue, but I'm not getting a clean cut. Okay, it's definitely user error. That's <laughs> not my trimmer. Um, okay, there we go. Let's put our picture on top and I'm gonna hold this in place for a moment so you can see. Super sweet. I love that look. So this kind of gives it a more of a rough and tough kind of look. Let me go ahead and adhere these together so we can see and make it all one size so we can kind of get a better visual let's see again these are just some scrap papers I'm not saying I would <laughs> would or wouldn't use these because I like these papers it's just a little bit different and this is what I recommend too. Just start playing with some of this stuff using your scraps, right? That way, you know, it was a scrap anyway. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Adding a little shelf of torn paper. And there we go. And like I said, I think this kind of gives it more of a rough and tough kind of look so maybe I would want to change out my floral um, embellishments there and maybe bring something in a little more um, appropriate for the look and feel that I'm going for so here I'm going for a whole different look with my um, my photo and my embellishments I'm gonna tuck that back there if this is just a pre-designed tag that I had laying around and I thought the tag kind of gives it more of a I guess rougher kind of feel especially because this was a brown tag and it had some of the same colors that I was using um, in the the little torn edge shelf here so it was perfect um, and by the way if you didn't know this is my <laughs> this is my favorite punch I say that all the time the three-in-one beveled tag punch and uh, yesterday creative memories I didn't put this in the promo um, slides that because uh, it came out late yesterday afternoon, but they have this uh, a little promotion going on with that where you can get the punch and some um, cardstock. So <laughs> if you've been waiting for that punch, now's might be the time for you to get some free cardstock too. Anyway, <laughs> back to our, our layout. So I think it gives it a whole different feel with the tag than it did with the floral um, elements there. Okay, another fun thing to do with torn edges is to turn it this way and use them as a little pocket super cute doing this I love that look you could put it behind any of them there we go pocket is super fun okay so yeah 
that's my favorite one. <laughs> Number three, which is paper tearing. Okay, let me clean this up. Go back to our original photo right there and we'll move on to number four. Let's see here, which is distressing. Distressing is fun. Um, I, you don't see a huge, if you really wanna add some subtleness to your photos, this would be um, the tool for you to use, okay? And there's lots of tools available out there. This one just happened to come in the most recent um, secret box, but there's lots of them out there. This is a really mini one. It does the same job as a bigger one, but you can also use just a pair of scissors, which I will show in a moment. So here I have another mat, and I you just take the tool and any of the edges would work. You stick it in the little slot and you just, you hold on to the cardstock. I have to do it kind of firmly. And then you just rough, like go up and it's gonna make the edge a little rough. This is great for farm photos, nature photos, hiking, camping, all those like outdoors, I guess is what I'm getting at. I'll come down, look how much I'm getting. That looks pretty nice. <laughs> I like it to, I like to see it. So I'll keep doing it until I could um, see it. And then I'm just gonna go around all edges. You can go up, you can go down. I don't think there's a wrong or right way to do that. And again, you just do it till you like it, a little messy. And then if you didn't have a tool and you wanted to use scissors, you just open your scissors like this and do the same thing, just rough it up around the edge. It does the exact same thing, so you don't, don't need to go get a tool. And then all the way around, both super easy, both super messy, <laughs> and very subtle. Let me uh, dust this off. My husband says I have a confetti party going on in here when I just, it, a lot of it ends up on the floor. I'm not gonna, <laughs> you guys I'm sure are the same, right? <laughs> so here we go, whoops. Hopefully you can even see that because it is a very subtle, but I love it because that's sometimes what we need. We just want a little bit of subtleness. Let's put that up so you can see. You can really see the top because I went really uh, rough there but also in person, you can really see it around the edges. So I, I like that one. Just a nice way to add it. Um, even though she looks sweet and innocent here, she is sweet and innocent still, but she uh, is a little bit uh, rough. So it would be totally appropriate. You gotta go with the personalities, right? Now see rough in a bad way. I mean, rough in a good way. So, um, wow, maybe I should just stop that. <laughs> but, and so use it, I guess what I'm trying to say is to use it when it's needed for your photos, okay? Let me grab a drink real quick. Excuse me, okay. Okay, that's number four, distressing. Super fun, super easy. Next one we're going to move on to is, let me go ahead and change out my mat. Put our original mat back in. And we are gonna talk about um, die cuts with stitching. Let me get my tray in place here. Have everything out in order for us. Okay, so when I say die cuts with stitching, I'm talking about um, items that we can get from using like a metal die in our die cut machine. So things like these. So just adding some elements. So we talked about our page and then we talked about um, borders and mats. Now we're getting more into just adding that subtle texture to our embellishments and our embellishment cluster. So I would use these as cluster bases 
So let's look at, um, this is a circle without any. I cut this with my custom cutting system perfectly fine. I, I love doing this just as much, but you can see, um, and I would place my embellishments right on top just like that. And it just, that alone does change the look of our layout, gives our, um, our embellishments a place to rest and to like sit on top of. And, but if I switch it out for one that has the stitching, this is a very subtle stitching on this one. It just adds that one extra little element, which I'm not even sure you guys can see up. There we go. So it just brings out a little bit more life to that area. Okay, this one has a really, you guys could probably see on that one. Yeah, you can see that one a lot better. But so adding stitching, we can get this in a lot of different ways. Um, let me show you my, these are just some simple dies. When I buy metal dies, I buy more for functionality than I do for theme. So I have a lot of shapes. I have just with the stitching, I have um, shapes and tags, ribbons, um, like very, like what I like to call generic. I like to say that, that, that I call them generic because I can use them on a lot of different layouts. It doesn't have to be just one layout. So I don't tend to buy a lot of um, thematic ones like Christmas or birthdays or stuff like that. I have a few, but I don't generally um, purchase those. I, I try and go for things that have a bigger functionality. So these are the ones I used for the ovals and the circle. And these are just nesting dies. So you get several different sizes, which are great. Um, some other dies that I have are, I would look for if you're looking for um, some are ones that have a lot of uh, detail maybe. Now they look, I'm gonna show you what these look like when they're cut out. So like this one turns into this. So you can see all that beautiful texture that that one has. Let's go ahead and swap that out and see the difference. You see how much that just changed the whole layout. I mean, of course it's, it's bright green, but um, it just has a lot of space, open space. The cut is clean and crisp. So it's, um, it looks, it just has a lot, adds a lot of texture to the layout. Okay, the heart is the same way. It, this one is a combo. <laughs> it has a stitch around it, but then it has that beautiful ruffle um, as well. Go ahead and change that out. Super cute, I actually love the, this one, <laughs> the heart, because just tucked in like a little in, um, embellishment over there. It's, it's acting as um, a base for our embellishments, but also adding in a lot of texture. Okay. Now this die is my probably my favorite one for adding texture. Let me see if I can show you that. Um, adding texture to my layouts. But I generally add this to like outdoor layouts, especially ocean or um, I guess something where it's gonna be like a little bit more rough and tough area because to me it looks like netting, like fish fisherman's netting. And this is what it looks like when it comes out of the punch. So it's super cute. <laughs> and it adds so much texture because of all the openness and the um, exact cutting of you know, down here, down the angle and how it's missing some pieces. Let's see what this looks like. I mean, I probably wouldn't use it for this photo in particular, but it's just, it really shows the example of adding texture. There we go. And you know what, maybe I would because it's kind of checkered and she kind of has little plaid on her outfit there. So, yep, that's one of my favorite ones to add. So if I ever see dyes that look like this, I would that's the kind I would buy to add texture. Okay, and in that same regard, if you don't have dyes or if you just love like laser cut embellishments are the same, they do the same thing that our die cuts do because they add, because they're cut 
and you know so crisp and sharp that it adds a lot of texture so let's put that let me put a little shelf here on my photo so she has somewhere to sit and then adding something like that is gorgeous this one this particular one I would probably dress it up a little bit she has red in her outfit so I would probably try and match it by putting a little bit of red under each of the flowers so something like that let me turn it I just did a rough cut but so laser cut embellishments do the same thing as some of those textured dyes I was just showing because they bring in that um, that roundness the pointy leaves let me bring it back the pointy leaves the roundness of the flowers it's all you know for a purpose this one is getting bent okay here's another one that I think is just gorgeous and shows how we can add the texture by using them I I tend to tuck these bigger ones a lot this could be also as an embellishment cluster we could bring back in our base I mean we could bring back in our flowers and hang it off like that so super super cute adding in a lot of texture with the leaves it gives us that feeling that we're outdoors it's clean cut very sharp one more oops Let's slide this one in same idea just a different cut okay that changed it a lot okay you agree is that changing it you see the differences any questions on that okay I'm gonna leave my little shelf here for a minute I think okay so that's number five let's move on to number six so we've talked about um, we're talking about our embellishments and we did a few examples on how we can add texture to our cluster base which then helps our um, whole embellishment cluster pop and now we can talk about um, specific um, embellishments themselves that could help add texture so you'll see on the screen there I have wood cork thread all of those um, obviously help to um, bring in texture because they are texture material right so let's see here what do we want to start with let me you know I want to bring back in my tag because the tag actually had one of those on here so the tag has the twine coming off and in person I'm not sure if you how much you can see it on the screen there we go you could see the little fibers coming off of the thread of the um, the twine and so that just adds a lot of texture right away to to my layout just by having that and it's kind of flowing and moving up it's giving us kind of the um, impression that it's you know movable and that it can flow um, some other things that I would add might be some wood pieces wood pieces look good um, again I would just try and go with my theme let's try and get all of our embellishments on here <laughs> see if we like that too much but you can kind of see how it, now I'm adding flowers to flowers and again I would do a lot of this with wood when I'm doing outdoor photos I do a lot of outdoor photos so I guess that's why I keep referring to that but they look really sweet for other you know it could be an indoor tea party could be a lot of things okay so that's wood another texture we could bring in um, is cork I don't know how many of you use cork I have different pieces here whoops whoops cork comes I don't have a lot of cork actually but um, I found it in a few different pieces I haven't used cork in quite a while but this one I actually was able to cut on my die cut machine so they have sheets that you can purchase um, like that but you know here's a nice one the butterfly the little tag says smile love I mean you can find them in a lot of stuff a lot of different shapes and um, pieces so adding those 
the cork really brings out the natural elements too. Okay, and then we already talked about the twine by adding thread. Another uh, thread that you can add would be um, just like em uh, embroidery floss is good. I've done that. I use that for tag for tags a lot. Um, also, regular old thread that you can get at the fabric store. This one happens to be gold. So. I, I, this is probably my most go-to thread. In fact, I don't know if I, I think I have silver and gold. Other than that, I don't have any other threads. But um, so what I would do with something like this is I would take it and then just gently wrap it around my fingers, two or three fingers, depending on what you're going for. And I would give it several loops around my fingers like that. And snip it. And then I would pinch the center or as close to the center as I could with where I looped it. And then I would add that, let's say I would add it right there and I would just use a little bit of wet glue. In fact, let me just grab my, my wet glue and we'll stick that on there. <laughs> You're liking my cluster? Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to add some little gold to that cluster and it just, this is a quick dry glue, but it's going to, it'll dry clear. You won't even see it, but there we go. It's just going to add that little bit. Let me pull that up. The glue will dry, even though the glue looks kind of cute as a little dot in the center, might even put something there in the center, but it'll dry clear and it'll look like the thread is just there on the tag. So very, again, very subtle, nothing major, just going to bring out whatever elements of our photo we are trying to pop out. That's gonna help by adding these subtle little touches. Okay. Okay, let me close my glue. Other embellishments that would, you know, have some feeling to it would also be like the flocked. Even though people are not going to reach in to behind my page protector and fill these, it's just going to give them the sense of touch because they might, they already know what cork feels like. It's just going to give them that feeling of cork. Again, I would use cork on like Western layouts, outdoors -y things. Let me move this so that can dry now. Okay. Let me see. We are up to number seven already. We're doing good. Change my tray here. So at the beginning, I was talking about how texture and dimension um, kind of work hand in hand as a uh, um, art element and draws people in, engages the eye into your layout. So we um, could bring in dimension as one of our texture elements as well. Okay, so that would be adding foam pieces behind um, our elements. Okay, so for example, this butterfly, I'm going to cut red because she has some red in her outfit. This butterfly alone I don't know if you could see that has a lot of texture in it because it you know has those at openness that airiness um, that we talked about it's crisp it's clean it's just a beautiful punch it, it makes a, a nice punch out I like to bend up the wings on my butterfly I just did that out of habit <laughs> um, but yeah that is going to add to the texture as well because it's going to give you the right away it looks like the butterfly could be real and could be flying. But what I would want to do here is try and get a little bit of um, adhesive on the back side. So these are, these are the small ones and they're even pretty small. So I would cut that before I remove it from the backing and then use only half. And I would, I mean, I would use the whole thing, but I would put it on halves. And then that's going to add 
um, a lot to our layout because it's now it's popped up. You can see the shadow underneath it. And again, it gives that, that texture of flight. The butterfly is now flying. Okay, um, other, other great punches would be, um, besides our critters, <laughs> would be leaf punches. Let's go ahead and try that. These are the things in nature that are already moving and we just wanna add that element to our page to make it look like it's moving as well. So with something like this five leaf, let's put it down here. I would probably put the foam square on maybe the middle because I'm gonna tuck in the bottom. The top will naturally pop up. And there we go. And you see that now I added a little shadow here and that leaf's not even popped up. Just those, those middle two are. Okay, so adding dimension really helps to um, add texture as well. Okay, they work hand in hand. Okay. Let's move on to number eight, which is a fun one. Embossing folders. Yep, I, I only have a couple embossing folders in my um, stash because um, I'm not a huge card maker. And again, just like my other tools, I usually if I'm gonna buy an embossing folder, it's gonna be a very generic one, not real heavy on the theme on a theme. This one, this dot one is probably my most used and even that I don't use it that often, but dots I feel like are pretty general. We can use those for a lot and then I have this cute plaid. So I have a couple others, but just not, um, but not wanted to show them those, those today. But again, they're, they're all generic. So this dot one comes out looking like this. I just put this through my, um, machine my die cut machine and it comes out looking like that so right away that adds a lot of texture to the paper which will swap it out for our mat on this Oops. and you can see the difference that that makes on let's put this up so you can see it there we go subtle very subtle but adds just that right amount of texture. Now I wouldn't do all nine of these examples on one layout. I mean, you could do a couple, but I would, you know, spread it out. That way it's not overwhelming, but there's a few that can go good together. Like I think these using dimension and the dots from the embossing folder wouldn't be too much, but you know, in person you can see that that is bumpy and has a feeling to it. So super cute. I like that one. And I went ahead and I punched out the, or I, I'm sorry, I um, ran the plaid one through my embossing folder um, as well because I thought, you know, she's wearing plaid in her little outfit there, so maybe that would look good too. So there I am trying to keep on theme and had something that might work. So there it is. Whoops, it's a little bit. There we go. Let me hold that up. So once the photo's on, I don't think you can really tell it's plaid underneath there, but it still is raised. It still has that extra texture, and I think it looks really good with her little outfit. Okay. Okay. So that was number eight. You guys ready for the last one? Number nine. Let me actually switch out our photo mat. Okay, there we go. Number nine, our final one. I'll move that down. I know you're waiting anxiously, right? <laughs> Drum roll. Okay, number nine is adding vellum. Vellum is a great way to add very subtle texture to our layouts. It's super fun. It really adds a gentle touch to our layout. So 
let me show you a couple different ways here we can do that we can simply just back our photo with it let me see if I can change my lighting so you guys can actually see there we go just adds a little bit of softness to our photo so if that's what you were looking for you want to add a little softness then vellum is a great option Okay, let me show you another way we could use the vellum behind the photo. And that's to go back to what we did at the very um, beginning, and that is to paper tear. So here I have the, some vellum that has some simple lines on it. And I would just do a little paper tearing around the edges. This vellum is a little thicker, but I don't want to take off a whole lot because I measured my mat to fit my photo. If you want to take off more, then of course add more. But we're trying to save paper for other <laughs> layouts. There we go. That's a good one. Yep, I don't have any rhyme or reason. They do have tools that do paper tearing. I don't happen to own one. I do it with my other hand there we go with the vellum it doesn't on this particular vellum it doesn't matter which direction I go you would just have to try it and see make sure that it I doubt you're gonna see a white center with with vellum but uh oh went really narrow there let's see how that's gonna look and you can make it as bumpy as rough as you want there we go looks kind of like a treasure map and then put your photo on it and that gives it whoops a whole different look let me put that up there we go this one not only has the texture of the lines in the vellum but then the texture of the rough cut around let me see my lighting change it back does that help there we go you can see the roughness of the vellum. Well, the, the rough softness of the vellum around the edges. It's gorgeous. Super cute. I am going to change that back, though. So I think, there we go. Yep, I love the vellum. <clears throat> I love the vellum. I often forget about the vellum. That's why what we should do is make ourselves a little list and then go over which <laughs> do any of these fit my layout for today. Um, some other ways that we might want to use the vellum is with our die cut machine. So if I bring back in this um, circle die, if you remember, <coughs> let me get a drink, I'm sorry. It cut out this shape with all the little openings. That would look super great behind I'm going to take out the piece behind here because I probably wouldn't do both. I just want to use it as a little bit of softness to my embellishment cluster. Yeah, put our butterfly right there. There we go. So that's another great way to use vellum to add texture. And then the last, um, another way I should say, it's not the last because I'm sure there are more, but the last one I'm going to demonstrate is to cut out a punch and make our embellishment. So I'm gonna swap out the butterfly for a vellum butterfly. I have this little scrap here. I'm gonna just use it to, I'm gonna use a post-it to hold it. It's a very small piece of um, scrap, but I didn't want to uh, waste it. So I know I can get this in my punch. I just put the little extender on there with our post-its. We use that trick a lot it's very useful okay I think it's in there <laughs> and there we go it cuts out it cut out so beautifully and let's just swap this out again I'm gonna bend up his leaves I mean his uh, wings I'm gonna put back in a different cluster base so you can actually see the butterfly because I would I wouldn't do I wouldn't overwhelm my layout with vellum it would just be little hints here and there 
and that's really hard to see but it's it's beautiful because it looks light and airy there we go okay and that was using our punches and our vellum together and there we go that's my nine <laughs> ideas how to add basic easy very subtle in some ways <laughs> subtle texture to our layouts let me come on back change my light around too so you could see me there we go <laughs> and that's it i i mean what do you guys think some of it were um reminders of things that we already do right um i i hope that maybe you were inspired some way to start adding some texture to um, your layouts or maybe you already do maybe it was just a reminder um, but yeah I hope that you enjoyed that uh, let's see old I'm coming to, Helen says I'm coming across old photos after I have made my album pages how can I add incorporate them uh, well yeah another video idea I would automatically suggest a peekaboo pocket um, and if they're not if they're not four by sixes because if they're older they might be smaller um, as well sorry my light is there we go <laughs> um, they might be smaller so I would maybe do like a six by twelve peekaboo pocket if you have a lot and then you could um, put paper behind it pattern paper mat them to help them stand out but that's the I think a good way to um, automatically just incorporate them um, so I, I, like your pages are done and now you're finding them. Yeah, that's always a bummer, huh? That's why I just love the peekaboo pocket. That would be my my best guess. Or you know what I've done before also, and I probably should find this before I try to explain it, but I've taken an old, this is Creative Memories products where I took an old eight by 11 page that they used to sell years ago and that fits in my uh, 12 by 12, the, the the little staples on the jeeping um, lineup and so I could put in a little page inside the big page so that's kind of fun too so maybe think about that um, yeah I, I the list the list for the embellishments the list for textures we can do a lot of you know it helps it helps to have a list Ruth so that we could go back to it right uh, yeah <laughs> yep it's like uh we should play like a roulette <laughs> we put all of our textured things on a wheel we spin it we ask siri <laughs> what number she picks and then we use those <laughs> no but it should match your layout it should um you know fit for whatever you are trying to accomplish <laughs> oh thank you helen okay you guys well thank you guys so much for joining me today i really appreciate it whoops um almost knocked things off um come back in two weeks <laughs> and maybe we'll i think we'll probably let's see what will we be doing we'll either be making a border or making a page <laughs> we'll do some scrapping for sure um but i thought this would be a good break time to kind of just work on our um, details and our elements that things that we can add so thank you for joining me and i'll see you guys in two weeks okay take care everybody Bye bye